All right, hey everybody, this is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. And if you don't know who we are, please visit our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com and uh, you can find out a little bit about who we are and uh, uh, see what is the latest in our shop and also ribbons and typewriter pads and puzzles and covers all there for you. Okay, today we're looking at a 1970s Coronet Electric 12. And this one has been repainted, so it's not the original color, um, but it's very close. And we are good. If you want to see a typing demo where you actually see it typed, there's a link in the description below, and you can follow that to see the demo. But this is just going to um, show you around how to use it. These are fairly common, so you probably might find one in your um, grandma's closet or something. Um, but they're really pretty easy to use. So let's go ahead and start with the back. This is your carriage, and your paper is going to be going in here. Back here is a paper holder, and that just keeps your paper from flopping over. It's actually pretty handy. I like it. You do have to do everything manually in terms of setting things. Uh, by the way, this is an electric, so you have to plug it in to a wall, and there's no batteries or charger or anything on it, and it does have a... Um, handle for a uh, manual handle return. We'll go over that in a second. So you just press and drag to set your margins. Okay, and remember that wherever you set your margins is where the carriage is gonna move. So to move your carriage, you just pull the lever in. Okay. And um, so if you have your margins in closer, then your carriage is only gonna move. It's only going to move as far as you have your margin set. The 12 inch carriage is really nice for those of you who like to do crafting just because it gives you a little more flexibility in terms of paper sizes. Um, and then also people do ask, yes, you can use cardstock in your typewriter. It's not going to hurt it at all. But when you load your paper, you just set it right here behind this bar and you turn the handle. And as you can probably see, it's crooked. So you have a lever right here on the right side and that's your paper released. And you just straighten it out. I like to make sure it's nice and even and then you just re-engage. Also make sure your paper is underneath this metal bar. Okay, now if you wanna, if you're doing a multiple page project, you wanna make sure you're loading your paper in the exact same spot. And that's what this paper guide is for. So. Um, you can like set it and then when you do the next paper, you know you're loading it in the exact same spot. Over on the left side, you'll see this metal lever with the numbers one, two, and three. That is your line selector. And what that means when you hit the return handle, it's gonna advance either one, two, or three lines. So that is what that is for. Um, also right here, is a black button. Let's see if you can see that. It's only on the left side. And kind of what that is for is um, you'll hear the click when you're turning your handle and um, it doesn't give you much flexibility if you need something to line up a little bit better. But if you press this black button while you turn the handle, it releases the um, roller there, and then that way you can kind of line things up a little bit better if you want. Okay, I'm gonna move this carriage all the way to the left before I open up the top. And inside is your ribbon, and when it's tra being transported, sometimes the ribbons pop out, and that's totally normal, but this uses a universal ribbon. This uses a two color, so black on top, red on bottom. If you want additional colors, you can probably search um, Etsy. I know there's sellers on there that have different colors if you want to use that. Um, to change it out, it's really simple. You just pull it out and you'll see that it's threaded in all these guide wires right here. And if you go to the link in the description below, that takes you to the product listing. There's photos in there and that will show you an up close image of um, this internal area and then you can bookmark it for reference when it's time to re-thread your ribbon. So, and then when it's time to put it back in, you just pop it down 
make sure it's all the way down. There's a little pin in there and you have to make sure it goes in one of those four um, holes and you just kind of jiggle it around until it's in and then make sure it's threaded. Okay, and then you're good to go. Um, now, when you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink. So um, when you get to the end of the spool, if you need to manually reverse your ribbon, there's a lever right here that says rib rev. You just switch that and that'll reverse the direction of the ribbon. And if you go back and forth many times before you need to uh, change it out because there's a lot of ink in there. And so how do you know when you need to reverse the direction of your ribbon? Well, um, you might be typing along and maybe it'll just stop typing or the font's gonna look really faint or it's gonna feel different. Anytime any of those things happen, stop and reverse the direction of your ribbon. Anytime your typewriter's not working real, always check the direction of your ribbon. You just have to get that in your head and it might take you a while to remember that, but um, always check your ribbon reversal switch first. Um, and that'll solve a lot of issues. And also you might notice that it gets like really tight, anything like that, then that's just a sign that the ribbon needs to be reversed. Okay, um, let's take a look down here. So um, first of all, okay, there's that bell. So that bell, that bell tells you you're at the end of your margins. And I'm gonna turn this on so we can talk about the rest of it. So here's your on off switch. Okay, so now that bell, that tells you, hey, you're at the end of your margin and you need to either hit your return handle and go to the next line, or if you get to that margin, the bell goes off and it stops on you and you're in the middle of a word. So let's say you're in, so that's gonna stop. It's not gonna let me go anywhere. You hit this MR key, which is margin release. And that'll let you finish your word there. And then you can hit the return handle. This is your tab area. So uh, I don't know if anything's set on this right now. So if you press the middle one, so there's a tab set right there, and then you just hit clear. Or if you want it all clear, if you hold down the clear and release the carriage and kind of, I just go back and forth, that should release all of the tabs. So, there we go, all the tabs are clear now. Now to set it, you just find a spot and then you hit set. And now you should have a tab. Yep, there you go. Uh, one note, um, sometimes the, it's just good not to put any mugs or anything breakable or spillable anywhere around your carriage. Um, sometimes tabs will blow past the tab stop and it'll fly across and hit a mug. Um, I'm speaking from experience there. Okay. <coughs> also, right here, this is your backspace key. Remember that backspace does not erase, but if you make a mistake, what you just do is you just backspace. Oops, I went too far. And type over. Now, there are... Um, uh, like uh, whiteouts and stuff like that out there, and um, I, I don't use them, so you would have to search and see if you can find anything like that. Um, but just remember, backspace does not erase, you just backspace and type over. Um, also, there's three keys on an electric typewriter that have an auto-repeat, and that's gonna be your dash, your period, and your X. And that's helpful if you make a huge mistake and you just need to kind of X through a whole thing. Um, or if you want to use typewriter art or you want to create a divider or whatever you can think of. Okay, color selector switch is over here on the right. So we've been typing in black. Let's switch it over. This is the red ribbon. Okay, and then copy set. That just determines how hard these type bars strike your paper. I really can't ever tell much of a difference, but you can kind of just fiddle around with that um, and see if you like, if, if, if you notice the difference and you just set it to where you like. Okay, so that is, oh, and the other thing is if you hold down your space bar, then it'll um, power space through. 
And then if you wanna know um, your serial number for your typewriter, if you lift it up, you will find your serial number um, stamped right here in the metal frame on the right side, okay? So that is how you use your Coronet Electric typewriter. And I hope you enjoy it and happy typing.